We're looking at inverse tangent values. To do this, we're going to use a unit circle. Now, I just did a Google image search and found this one pretty quickly. I don't like the rationalized denominators version, but that's okay. We'll use it. Everything you see here, remember x is the cosine. So when you see points, the first value is the cosine. The second value is the sine. What's not listed on this table is the tangent. So what I'm going to do is next to each point, I'm going to write the tangent value here. So this is how they'll all look. Well, I'm only going to do the first quadrant. You just make them negative here, positive here, negative here for the other quadrants. Okay. What is tangent? So cosine is x, sine is y. And of course, tangent is y over x. So all we're going to do is take these values and just do y divided by x and then simplify. So we'll start with 0, 1. 0 over 1 is 0. So that means tangent of 0 is 0. Now we'll move to pi over 6. So y is 1 half. x is square root 3 over 2. And we reduce this by multiplying by the reciprocal of the denominator. So the 2's cancel. You have 1 over square root 3. Now, if you're going to rationalize all your denominators, I'm not going to. I'm going to leave this as 1 over square root 3. But if you do want to rationalize your denominators, you can. You multiply this by square root 3 over 3. And then you get square root 3 times square root 3 in the denominator is regular 3. 1 times square root 3 is square root 3. So you could use 1 over square root 3, or you can use square root 3 over 3 like we just got. That's exactly how they rationalize these right here. All right, so we're getting ready for pi over 4 now. So the y value and the x value here are the same. And because it's the same, they're going to cancel out, and they cancel out to 1. So tangent of pi over 4 is 1. Next up right here. Now if you look, these are the exact values that are right here, except what happened, the x and the y traded places. So we're going to get the exact same thing here, except the reciprocal, which is square root 3 over 1. But of course, we know that's just square root 3. So if you don't rationalize your denominators, you can easily reciprocate this right here. But of course, if you decided to rationalize your denominator, then you would have 3 over square root 3, uh, which you then have to re-rationalize. So you can have fun rationalizing denominators all day. I'd rather do other things. Last up. All right, right here. This one's a little bit strange. y is 1, x is 0. Now, what is this? This is undefined. So we're just going to write this as un. Def. All right. Now, what happens in quadrant two? So in quadrant two, this is the same as that, except one of them is negative. So tangent is negative over here. And then, of course, if you wanted the five pi over six, it's the negative of that, of just pi over six. And this comes down to reference angles because those angles are the same. All right, quadrant three. Now, everybody's negative, x and y are negative down here, so tangent is going to be positive in quadrant 3, and tangent is negative in quadrant 4. Okay, that's the tangent values of the unit circle. Now we're about to look at tangent inverse, and one thing you should remember about tangent inverse is we're only going from negative pi over 2 up to pi over 2. So that means this whole side of the unit circle is going to be out. And we're going to use the negative names of these right here. So instead of pi, uh, 11 pi over 6, we're going to go with negative pi over 6. We're going to go this direction. Next angle is negative pi over 4. Next one, 5 pi over 3. Go in the negative direction. That's negative pi over 3. And 3 pi over 2 is negative pi over 2. So these are the 
uh, angle names we're going to have to use if we have a negative tangent value. All right, so let's look at the first one. Tangent inverse of zero. So what I like to do is create an angle theta equals tangent inverse zero. And remember, regular trig functions input angles and output sides, but the inverse trig functions input sides and output angles. So that's why I have theta equals here and not X or Y or some other letter. We're gonna move tangent to this side. So we have tangent theta equals zero. And now I wanna know what angle has a tangent value of zero. We're looking at, again, these blue values here. And you should be able to tell where zero is. It's right here and the angle is zero radians. So the first one we have zero. All right, next up, negative square root three over three. So first thing notice, negative means it's not in quadrant one. So for us, for tangent inverse, that means we're in quadrant four because we got rid of quadrant two and three with tangent. Okay, so square root three over three, where's that going to be? Well, it's gotta be Oh, angle corresponding to these. Now, unfortunately, it's rationalized. Good news is we know where square root three over three is. It's that right there, but we want the negative version. So we're gonna go right here. And again, that's the same reference angle. And that will be negative pi over six is the angle for that. They're also telling us in the problem, but we shouldn't really rely on that. Uh, so we got negative pi over six. All right, last one, tangent inverse of one. Well, it's positive one. So that means we must be in quadrant one. And you can see right here, here's the one, and it happens at pi over four. So that's all there is for that one. Okay. That is how you do tangent inverse of different values. Strongly recommend that you use the unit circle. It's useful to draw it out yourself, which we did in class, and I recommend do it every so often, maybe once a week, and see if you can remember these values here. That will help out a lot and make things a lot faster in the future if you don't always have to look back at the unit circle.